Hey guys, Happy New Year. Welcome back to another episode of Cooking with Clams. I'm Will. Uh, <coughs> today is my first day out of quarantine. As you can tell by my coughing, uh, I had a nasty little bout with uh, COVID. <coughs> I'm on the mend, a little bit exhausted. If I go into a coughing fit, we'll edit that out though. Um, so one of the things I haven't been able to fish and I've barely been able to cook. Um, thankfully didn't lose my sense of smell or taste because that would have been devastating. Um, but one of the things that for anyone new to the channel I wanted to really push home is the idea behind the channel. And that is one of the things that I do. I go to docks and fishermen and collect the scraps that they would discard and turn them into meals. And I like using pieces of the fish that normally you would think of as trash. Um, I like using fish that you would normally think of as trash. I uh, use underutilized species, I use bait. Um, actually today I'm out fishing for herring, which a lot of people consider just bait and not food. Um, but I didn't want to leave you without an episode this week. so. What I did, I reached out to a couple of friends and fellow YouTubers, and I asked them what their favorite part of the fish is other than the filet, how they like to prepare it, and why. Why do they like using this part of the fish as opposed to the prize cut, which is the filet. Um, so I got a couple of really good people, man. Let's see what they have to say. Hello everybody, my name is Aaron Young. I am a charter captain and commercial fisherman out of Key West, Florida, also a YouTuber. Uh, my good friend and roommate William asked me to make a video about utilizing the entire fish, which I'm a huge fan of, big advocate for that, uh, and to talk about a little bit about what my favorite part of the fish is. Um, so quite frankly, the entire fish is my favorite part, but if I had to choose one that I really like to utilize, that I think a lot of people don't use is the rack. So once you take the filet off, you've got the backbone and the ribs and all that still in place. That is a beautiful cut of meat. I feel like it has, I could be crazy, but I feel like it has a different flavor. Um, and it's because it's so thin, you can cook it really quickly and however you marinate it or season it, it's really gonna take on that flavor. It really is a beautiful cut of meat. One of my favorite ways to do it is I'll make kind of like a summer salad, tomato, red onion, lemon, lime juice, and olive oil, and then I will just blacken the crap out of the, that rack literally seared on the grill, super hot for about 30, 40 seconds on each side because that piece of meat or that cut is so thin, it does not take long at all. You gotta eat it with your hands and pick through the bones, but I promise you there is a ton of meat left on there. Um, and my other favorite part is probably the, the whole head, but I'm not gonna talk about that. Oh, sorry, missed my, missed my mark. I'm out here sword fishing, but um, really, really like utilizing the whole fish. I'm a huge fan of that. The cheeks, the collar, the head, everything. But if you haven't already, give the rack a try, I promise. Uh, you will not be disappointed. You can do it from 12 inch snappers to 30 pound groupers, does not matter. Um, I'm out here actually trying to catch a swordfish right now and we've cooked the racks of swordfish before. So that is all I got. Keep that in mind, do appreciate your time and I will see you later. Hey guys, I'm Lauren Sarasua. I'm a free dive spearfisher here in Miami, Florida. I also have a YouTube channel called Lauren Sarasua. And I really want to thank Will for getting us all together. This is a really important topic, talking about the fish and all the parts that can be utilized besides the filet, which is obviously the most popular part. But there are so many different parts that are so delicious, including some of the organs. But today I'm going to talk to you about my favorite part, which is the head. Once you try this, you will not go back. You'll never throw away another head again in your life. I promise you. It's so good. The meat is so tender and so juicy. You're gonna love it. So I really think you should try it. I know it sounds weird, but just give it a try and let me know what you think. What a lot of people like to use the head for is for making soup, but there's a much simpler way to utilize it. I'm gonna show you how to do that. I'm gonna bring you into the kitchen and show you how to cook it. First step is to butterfly the head so that you can press it down to lay it a little more flat while you're baking it. Then you want to take a nice olive oil and drizzle it all over the head. Top it with your favorite salt, stick it in the oven at 350 degrees Fahrenheit or 177 degrees Celsius. Bake until it's fork tender and then you want to put some lemon juice on top of it and it's ready to serve. Look at all of the meat that's in that head. Just pull the skin back and you'll see all of that juicy meat. <laughs> Look at this cheek. You never want to forget about the cheeks. Look at how juicy that is. It's incredible. 
The obvious benefit of utilizing every part of the fish is that you can just make that many more meals out of it. You can use it for appetizers, you can make, you can use not only the fillets, you can use the head, you can use different organs, you can use the collar. There's so many different parts of the fish that are just so delicious and so underutilized. But in 2022, I know we're all trying to do our part to be more sustainable and we all want to see the fish population thrive. So here's to doing our part. I really hope you enjoy the head and I'll see you next time. Bye. What's up guys? I'm Taku from Outdoor Chef Life and I'm about to go do a little fishing, but Will asked me to hop on here really quick and talk about some fish stuff. So if you guys are catching fish and if you're only eating the fillets, um, I believe that you are missing out on a whole lot of potential goodness. There are so many other parts of the fish that you can eat. For starters, you got the head, you got the collars, you got um, the cheeks as well. The, those are all delicious. Those are like the starter stuff, you know, but if you want to get into the real advanced stuff, you got the guts. Everything in the guts is also delicious and edible. It has so much potential, such as the liver, the stomach, the heart, the roe the milt aka sperm fish sperm you can eat that too and all that stuff has oh man it has a lot of flavor a lot more texture so much different than the fillets itself fillets are boring those are like the chicken breast you know it's just white meat it's it's boring it's bland on most fish most white fish taste the same um, but when, once you get to the real good stuff inside the guts that's that's where that's where it gets interesting and will ask me to pick my favorite piece and I think that my favorite piece, I'm gonna have to go with the stomach. The stomach has amazing, amazing texture. It's so different than the rest of the fish. Um, the liver is also great too, but the texture of the stomach is my favorite. It's kind of like, well, if you've had tripe, that's basically what it is. It's the same thing. Um, if you have menudo, menudo is one of my favorite Mexican dishes. And oh, well, that's a great idea. I'm gonna make menudo with fish stomach. Fish menudo, that would be delicious. Don't take my idea, Will. That's mine. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding, you can do that. Uh, but I'm gonna do that for sure. That sounds delicious. Uh, but the way that I've done it, I love it. If you just grill it, put it on a skewer, put some salt and grill it over into some nice charcoal and put some tare on it, grill it some more, a couple times with the tare and it is delicious man i'm telling you the crunch in it the texture it has kind of has a chewiness to it um but it it's kind of like squid like that kind of chewiness delicious i've even had like halibut stomach that it tasted like it was so fatty that it tasted like uh pork belly yeah literally tastes like pork belly it was crazy so yeah there's a lot of potential i'm telling you and I think we have to look at sustainability as, you know, not just eating the right fish, but eating the whole fish, the entire fish, whatever you can utilize to make a meal out of it, you should, especially for the big fish, you know. Um, if it's like a small trout, then yeah, I throw the guts out, I don't eat that. But if it's like a big, nice fish, yellowtail, uh, white sea bass, those are some of the things that I've utilized before, a big halibut, lingcod, things like that. Once you understand how to cook these parts, you'll develop a love for them and the potential is endless you just have to be creative enough to to make it your own and to make it delicious because the potential is there so thanks for listening to my little spiel about uh, eating fish guts all right guys peace hi my name is daniel mann and thank you so much will for inviting me to be part of this video talking about all the parts of the fish that generally get thrown away now a little background I grew up in Australia spearfishing and a lot of the fish that you get there are big. You can get a lot of big fish as well. So you tend to get a little bit lazy in the way that you process your fish. For me, I know that I used to just fill up the fish and that was kind of where my processing ended, which was very wasteful in hindsight. Fast forward to the present day, I've lived in London for the last six years. I've dived in Europe and all around here. And let me tell you, there's not as many fish and they're not nearly as big. So when I do go spear fishing here, I want to try and maximize as much of that fish as possible. And for me, the best way to do that, that's really simple, is to take the wings. Now the wings or collars or throat, as some people call this part of the fish, is the section that connects from the mouth and goes down into the pectoral fins, which are these ones that go out the side of the fish here. 
Getting the wings off a fish couldn't be more simple. All you have to do is put a knife up around the top of the gill plate and slice through the bone there. There's generally a little way to get your knife through that's not cutting through bone all the time. And then you just follow it down along the belly flap, above the ribs, just on the tips of the ribs, and then around under the belly, repeat on the other side, pull it down from the throat, and you have this beautiful piece of meat. Yes, the wings do contain bones, and I know some people are scared of eating fish with bones in them, but let me assure you, the wings don't contain any of those little tiny pin bones that will get stuck in your throat and all that sort of stuff. They're quite large. It's more like eating a chicken wing. Cooking fish wings couldn't be more simple. All you have to do is dust them in some corn flour and shallow fry them or deep fry them. The pectoral fin will go nice and crispy, so will the little ventral fin that you find there as well. These things are like little fish crackling crispy bits. They're super tasty and the rest of the meat just falls off the bone and I can't recommend it highly enough. Not only are fish wings a great meal, it means you're using more of the fish, which is so important in 2022 to try and utilize more of the resource that you have. If you're going out shooting 10 fish every time you go out just to take the fillets off, that's so wasteful. You could probably be getting another five meals out of the parts that you don't eat from the fish wings alone. So in 2022, make it your goal. Try something other than the fillet on a fish. Hi guys, my name is Valentine Thomas and I am here today to talk to you about one of my favorite fish parts. And it's not a fillet, it's actually something that's very popular in Japan. A little bit less in the United States. It's called the milt. Milt, which is M-I-L-T, which is also known as the sperm. Uh, you may wonder what fish sperm look like. Well, it actually looks like this when it's frozen. So it kind of looks like the roe, and it is absolutely amazing. It tastes like foie gras, foie gras, which is foie gras in English. And then um, what I like to do is I dip it in egg, and then I dip it in breadcrumb, and I just fry it and it tastes absolutely fantastic. Um, I have been a big fan of fish scraps for a really long time and this kind of became my favorite because nobody likes it. I still like to feed it to people when they don't know what it is and I tell them after, which, you know, a bit mean, but they get over it. And yeah, I mean, if you have been throwing the rest of the fish away and only keeping the fillet, you've been missing out on not only fantastic fish sperm, but also a lot of other great stuff. The head, the colors, everything you can think of. It's pretty much everything apart from the gut is actually edible and is tasting really great. Think about if you're having a chicken and you would just take the chicken breast and throw the entire rest of the chicken away. Well, it's the exact same thing with fish. Brown meat for fish is a thing and it is absolutely mind blowing. So do me a favor, next time you go fishing, keep all of that fish and making a lot of cool stuff with it. Thank you, have a good day. That was awesome. I really wanna thank everyone involved again. Uh, you guys are the best. And I'm gonna link everyone's information down below. Um, any of their YouTube stuff, social media, check them all out. You got great Spiros, fishermen and chefs there and uh, really great people across the board. Um, again, I wanna hit home. There are other pieces of the fish other than the filet. Use the whole fish. If you're going to take the beast, use the whole beast. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. If you like this one, hit like, hit subscribe, check out those other guys, and I will see you on the next one.